So what we have here is a 20 gallon per minute 12 stage stainless steel pump head and the motor is a 2 horsepower 3 wire 230 volt. So we're going to go ahead and open this up and assemble this thing. There's the pump stack. If you're not paying attention. 6 inch box for a 4 inch motor. Yeah, that's heavy. bottom styrofoam on for now. I'm going to have to twist these. I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit these with the soldering gun. Put the stay on it. But first, we're going to take the stack here. We've got our hardware inside. All stainless steel. So the first thing first is we have to take the screen off. The wire guard is interfering, so we also have to take it off. I'm going to take just a little bit of lubricant here. We're going to put that right there on the splines. Just a little bit of silicone. It will help this seal and help this first go together to make better. All right, I was lucky. You don't always get that lucky that the shaft lines directly up with the splines. All right, next step is we're going to put our lock washers on. Then we're going to take our nuts and put them on. Now every submersible well pump you see is assembled like this, but they all come pre-assembled. When you come to a larger system like this, they're sold in two pieces, where you can either replace the pump end or you can replace the motor end. In this situation, um, the motor is actually bad and the pump end is only two years old. But the individual I spoke with, he said, no, we just want to go ahead and pull it out and replace both. And they're going to keep the old one as a backup and just replace the motor at a, at a later date. The issue is that this is actually for a town for a water tower. And because it's for a water tower, it's like one of six that feeds the water tower and he told me that it was uh, essentially his main supply and this is only a 20 gallon a minute pump but the crazy thing is it runs non-stop he says it'll run probably 20 hours out of the day while it's demand because the well makes so much water and the other five that they have hooked up to feed the water tower for this town don't make as much water as this well does. So this pump gets abused where the other ones cycle on and off on a timer in order to allow the well to recover. And what we're going to do here, we're going to go around just like uh, you do on a, on a car when you're tightening the wheel studs. You don't want to cinch one down, you want to go around and go back and forth and opposite to one another and opposing to where you don't have it cocked at a little bit of an angle. That one's good. That one's good. That one's good. Okay, now I need to be able to hold that. are good. Go ahead and lay this down. And we're going to set that right there so it won't roll off. Now this little protective sheathing 
I believe should stay down here to protect it against that, but I may be wrong. We're going to go ahead and take the rubber band off, and now we're going to put the wire guard back. And then at the end, we're going to put the screen back on. So we have to lay our wires. Lay them flat. If they're not flat, they will not lay underneath the wire guard perfectly. We've got that. I'll go ahead and take this. Let's see. I need two people, but here again I'm working alone while I'm assembling this. Okay. I see down here that that's catching. So we're gonna go ahead and bend this up. So we'll go away from that. Tap that back down. Now we're going to reinsert our screws. The wire guard will be on. Hey, yes, sir. Hey, come here and help me with this. All right, one second. Okay, got that screw in. The screw in. Wires are nice and straight. No pinches. No bulges in this because you don't want that bulged up or the wire will be under that. So, all right, next thing we got to do is put the screen on. All right, so now that we have the wire guard back on, I need to go ahead and bend this tab back down. Good to go. Now let's focus on the wires. We're going to have to go ahead and run some solder on these and uh, put our crimps on. Take this, give it a couple of twists, and heat it up. Alright, got one done. Now that we have these in soldered, we're going to go ahead and cut them off, cut that little piece off of it. I'm take this, put it in our crimper, and I put our stake on, on, our butt connector, our wire splice, whatever you want to call it. That way when we get on the job, we are ready to go. Alright, those are done. Now the only thing left to do is to put the screen back in the center. Put this on like that. Just gonna go put our screw back in. Okay. And there you have it. A two horsepower, 20 gallon a minute, 240 volt, three wire pump, ready to go. So this is strictly like preparation before we go out to the job. We typically spend an hour to an hour and a half in the shop putting stuff together, pipe doping things, threading things together, whatever it is to where we save time from being out on the job to where the customer doesn't have to pay the additional labor time. Also, we don't have to spend our, our time tightening stuff and doing stuff that we could have done in the shop out in the elements when it's cold weather like this. So this is where this video is going to end and the video will actually pick up uh, the, the following to this one will be uh, out there on the job. Um, we are going to pull a two horsepower 270 foot on inch and a quarter poly pipe and we're going to be using our electric pump puller for that. Um, this will be considered a commercial job so there are some regulations that we have to follow. But uh, if you want to check out that job, go ahead and check out that video. Um, if you're watching this one, it won't be there yet. But it'll be right after this one. So thanks for watching.